Good evening, good evening, Bible Baptist. So good to see you all here tonight. What a great day it is that we can gather together and worship our Lord. So let's all stand together. We're going to get started and we're going to sing when the roll is called up yonder. I'll be there. Let's sing it out when the trumpet of the Lord. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the saved on earth shall gather over on the other shores. And the roll is called up yonder. I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder. 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 yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Let us lay before the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all this wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Amen. There shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of love. Let's all sing it out from the first verse tonight. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling. But for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Precious reviving again over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead, there shall be showers of blessing. Send them upon us, O oh Lord. Grant us now a refreshing come and now honor your word showers of blessing showers of blessings we need mercy drops round us are falling but for the showers we plead there shall be showers of blessing oh that today they might fall now as you God we're confessing now as on Jesus we call, oh, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Josh, I have one question for you. When did you pick that song? <laughs> when did you, like yesterday, day before? Could you pick it more often and maybe we'll get a little bit more rain around here? I don't know. But let's see. Can we go back? Let's sing that chorus. Let's just sing the last verse again. That way we can kind of lead into it. There shall be showers of blessing all that today. Where are we? Let's go to the last verse of the song. Let's sing it again. We got folks coming in. Kids Clubbers coming in for the Hall of Fame Kids Club. Teen Tears, Teens and Truth coming in. There shall be showers of blessing. Let's sing it. Uh, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Grant to God we're confessing. Now as on Jesus we call. Oh, showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. 
Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. It is wonderful to see you tonight. God is good. Join with me in prayer, please. Our Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for your goodness to us. Father, I pray you to bless the service tonight. Be with Brother Minnick as he preaches your word. Be with the Kids Club in just a few minutes as we prepare to dismiss them. Father, the Spanish ministry, all of the classes going on. Father, may your hand be on every one of them. And may we leave here tonight with a greater desire to seek and to serve you with our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Welcome to our Super Summer Wednesday nights. We started them a few weeks ago and continue tonight in just a moment. A little earlier, so kids pay attention. We started our Summertime Kids Club for the boys and girls last week. We're going to be dismissing you right at the end of the announcement, so be ready for that. Uh, the teens are going to stay in here tonight because we have a guest preacher this evening. But a lot going on throughout the summer. Glad to have Brother and Mrs. Minnick and their family with us tonight. In a couple of weeks, we're likely to have a split night, men's session and ladies' session. We have another guest preacher going to be with us in about a month. Brother Philip Jones from Pasadena is going to be here. A lot of it has the emphasis. Brother Herbert was here uh, about two weeks ago. A lot of it with the emphasis of the need of church planting. I'm going to talk with you more about that and the need for churches, yes, across America but right here in the state of California, all over California, there are places in need of a gospel message from independent Baptist churches. And so I am praying for that, and I want our church to be a part of that. And there are other good churches that are like-minded in that with us. And we're going to be emphasizing that some uh, throughout the summer, as well as all the kids' clubs and everything else. But I am going to introduce a man with a koala tonight to come up and talk to us a little bit more about Vacation Bible School. He is the perfect man to tell you about VBS coming up. VBS starts Monday, so hear what he's got to say about it. Well, good day. I know it's a good accent. My name's Guy, Guy Dangerous. Now, you might be wondering about this little guy around my back right now. This is my koala friend, Bruce. Careful, he's a feisty little fella. Raised him from young. Now, VBS is coming. It's coming fast. It is starting this Monday, and I want you to be praying for it. I want you to be telling other people about it. Kids are going to have a fantastic time. We are going to have a couple animals coming from the Sparia Zoo. I know we got some sloths coming. We have some anteaters coming. It's going to be an awesome experience. We've got some fun games planned, but most importantly, kids are going to get to hear about Jesus Christ. Now, as you can tell, we got an Australia, Australian theme going on, and we're going to take some lessons as you walk through the hallways, you might notice there's some uh, biblical themes going around. We're going to take our journey from Egypt to the promised land. I can't wait for it. But here's what I need from all of you. We have those cards in the foyer. Hand out as many of them as you can. Be telling people as much as you can. Be encouraging them to come. It is starting Monday, and it's going to go all the way to Friday. It's at each night from 6 to 8.15 at night. And then be praying. Be praying now already that God would use this as a fantastic opportunity to reach many families with the gospel. And tomorrow morning, make sure that you're out for soul winning visitation at 9.30. Child care is provided on Thursdays. We'd love to have you out. And then also on Saturday morning as well, we have a time to go out at 9.30. And then be here all day on Sunday. The best way to observe Sunday is to remember it's not sun morning, it's Sunday. It's Sunday all day. From 9 o'clock Sunday school hour, be in your class to 10 o'clock morning preaching service. Make sure that you're here. And then in the evening, in the evenings, we've been having our Sunday night volleyball league. We will not have the volleyball this Sunday night. Instead, we're going to eat. We have one last fundraiser for kids going to camp. They leave for Silver State Baptist Youth Camp in just about two and a half weeks. We have one more for them. Uh, Brother Ted, it's taco night. That's what we're doing. One more taco night this evening. There's flyers in the foyer. Be here. So a great way to have some fellowship, enjoy some food. And then a week from Sunday is July 3rd. July 4th, of course, the following day. And we want to have everyone here July 3rd. We'll have regular schedule in the morning. Sunday school hour at 9. During the 10 o'clock service, we have a special Independence Day presentation. And then that evening, we're moving the service up one hour to 5 o'clock. We'll have a 5 o'clock service for this reason. We're going to have a barbecue on the grounds after church that Sunday night. So have a service at 5. We did this last year, so remember that. Uh, then we're going to have, I think we have... Uh, 
things for the kids to do, games, things that they get to take home, maybe some water balloons, all kinds of that. And then we're going to play volleyball for those who'd like to as well. So it's going to be a great, great day all day on July 3rd. But the next big thing coming up after tonight, as far as church is concerned, is soul winning Thursday and Saturday. And then the next big thing, church, all day on Sunday. I want to ask you this question. Do you know one person that you can invite to be with you this Sunday morning? If you do, pick up your phone, send them a text, give them a call. Uh, message them on Facebook, whatever you need to do, go to their home and invite them to join you at church this Sunday. Let's stand together. Brother Josh, what are we going to sing right now? He hideth my soul. And right now, teens are staying here, but the Boys and Girls Hall of Fame Kids Club for the summertime, they are dismissed to the gymnasium. Just follow the man with the koala, and there's a life-size koala around here somewhere. I've seen him too. And uh, so they have a great time. But as we sing, Brother Josh, the kids are going to go. What a great group tonight. Brother Josh, go ahead. All right, we're going to sing, A Wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. Let's sing it, He Hideth My Soul. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. about that name. There's no other name but his name, Jesus. Let's all sing it, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the phrase. Or 
something about that name. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. There's no name like Jesus' name. Now tonight we're getting ready to receive the offering. Many of you now give back in the plate like you're used to for a long time, but through all the changes and everything the last couple of years. Some of you now give on the back wall there in the offering boxes. You're welcome to do that. You give online or you give in the plate. However you give, be faithful, be cheerful as a giver. And then after I pray, you may be seated. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we do have to give. We ask your blessing now upon this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Take your prayer list and look at that. One thing I do want to mention for next week, I did mention we do know it's VBS around here all week and it's in the evening, but we will still have the midweek service in here. Uh, so if you're not volunteering around the building or helping in one of the classes, we will be having uh, the service Bible study right here next Wednesday night as well. That'll be at 7, even though typical regular time, even though VBS starts at 6. You may notice the print is a little bigger, bigger and the... Uh, prayer request list is kind of more extended. We did that so we could read it. We started getting so many that the print was getting awfully small. I looked at it one time, wow. Uh, I was blessed with the doctor telling me a couple years ago I didn't wear them tonight, but then I have the privilege of now wearing bifocals. And I've been needing them on the prayer list recently. So if you didn't notice already, the names for salvation are on the back of your list, just like they were on the front, but we spread it out a little bit. Our Ministry of the Week, Junior High Sunday School class. So thankful for the Bell's faithfulness. Glad to have the Junior Hires in here with us from the teen department tonight. You pray for them. And if God would lay it on somebody's heart to be a part of our teen ministry, helping maybe in the Junior High class, I would love to talk with you about that. What a pivotally important time. To help and to work in a person's life is that age. And maybe you'd say, I've never helped them before. Uh, neither had the bells until they started. Now, they do such a great, great job. But there is room for more adults helping in the teen ministry. We do have a uh, fingerprint interview process and all that. But we'd love to talk with you about that. Across the page, uh, missionaries that we have supported for a long, long time. The Fosters will be with us in a few months. But also, Pat and Elizabeth Flores. I remember them from... Years ago, growing up, when I was in Gethsemane Baptist, back in the day, they had their whole family come with them, and they all played brass instruments. I remember them very, very well. Now, Mom and Dad, the parents there, Pat and Elizabeth, are still serving the Lord in Mexico, and then the Fosters now have been in South Africa for many, many years. Under new request, if you'll note, Judy Meyer's brother recovering from surgery, Vita Adam's sister, we praise this. Uh, her MRI showed much improvement. We're glad for that, no longer in need of surgery. Summer Haas, a friend of Carlene Johnson. Uh, her son Luke was in a bad accident, is in Loma Linda Hospital. Marvell asking prayer for her health. Aubrey and Kim, so thankful for their faithfulness every Sunday uh, that they're able to be here praying for their family. Paula Hyen uh, for her mother. Uh, Rafaela Zamora for health. Paula's a new attender to our church. Jennifer Estes for health. Sandra Cavell is in need of a kidney transplant, if you might be in prayer for Sandra. Many of us have been praying for Sandra's health for a long time. Philomena Torres, family of her niece, uh, Feli Ferguson, died last Monday, and also for Phil uh, Philomena's own health. Mary Lacey 
is in health, uh, health need, and they're having a bit of a lockdown situation right now. Where she's at due to a health problem running through there, as we're all dealing with now, but not good when we're dealing with it in a convalescent center. So if you'd pray for Mary and those there. Mike Finch asked for safe travels upcoming on a trip, and then asked for his uh, brother and sister-in-law with an unspoken request, and then Sharon Stevens for her granddaughter's salvation, and also asked me, so put on here, if you will, for her daughter-in-law's business. She has a personal uh, independent business, and she's lost quite a bit of that uh, due to some troubles uh, recently, if you might pray for her. And then add, if you will, uh, Cindy Ellinger, if you will, add her, or add uh, Eldridge, if you'll add her to the prayer list tonight, uh, she had a colonoscopy and having some complications following that. And then Gary asked prayer for his daughter, Leanne Hoyles, uh, personal need that she has. And then I want to ask this, how many of you are praying for somebody unsaved by name? Would you raise your hand all over the congregation? Let's be a faithful witness. I say this sometimes when I have us do that is that we might be raising our hand for someone who lives across the country in Kansas, North Carolina, Texas, Florida, somewhere. Realize that tonight, somebody there is probably praying for someone out here in the high desert, praying that somebody will take them the gospel. That's our responsibility here. So let's be faithful as witnesses for the Lord. And how many of you are praying for something or someone in an unspoken manner? Would you also lift your hand? and uh, be in prayer for those. Now, I want to mention these at the bottom. We have developed a lengthy long-term request list, and we've developed a lengthy unsaved list. I'm going to ask this due to the length of it. Over the next four weeks, if you would let the church office know whether or not to leave somebody on there, please contact the office and say, leave my long-term request on or leave my prayer request on for salvation, uh, just so that we can better keep track of who and what we are praying for, and then those that we get a reminder to keep on the list, we will keep on. Uh, we've done that in the past, and it's grown considerably, and glad to pray for everybody, but want to confirm that we still need to be in prayer for these. So if you would let us know over the course of about the next four weeks, about the next month, uh, if you could let us know on the office, we would be very, very thankful for that. If you join me in prayer, please. Our Father, we come to you. You are the one that we must come to in the day and age in which we are living. For without you, we can do nothing, Lord. And I ask for your strength upon this church. Father, as the old song says, revive us again. I am glad for the work that you're doing, but Father, we want to see a work that truly only you can do in our midst. And I know that many of us are banding together to pray that way. In a very dark day, in a very dark time, and in a state that desperately needs you, Father, I pray for an outpouring of your spirit upon this church, that we would see a work that can truly only be done by you. Father, I pray for all of these requests here from these long-term requests that are here week after week. We pray for them, pray for these salvation needs that are on the back. For this week's request, Father, so many that are listed there, burdens, heartaches, physical struggles, issues that are there represented by many lives that are here tonight, I pray for each and every one of them. I pray, Father, for our ministry of the week in that junior high class, what an important age it is to get a hold of their hearts and lives and to help them to stay on a straight path before you and to reach young people with the gospel. Father, for the Flores, I thank you for their years, decades of testimony of a witness for you on the fields that you have had them on. For the Fosters there in South Africa, thank you for their faithfulness, and I pray that you would bless them. Father, I pray for missionaries, evangelists sent directly out of our church tonight. I pray, Father, for the Dacunias, that you continue to bless them as that church is now being organized and do an independent work. Father, I pray for Brother Vic in Mexico. I pray for Brother and Mrs. Hernandez there in New Mexico on the evangelistic ministry that he's getting involved with. I pray for each and every one of them. I pray for our church family tonight. I pray, Father, for spiritual needs. I pray for strength. And Father, I pray that you would, among your church, raise up a group of people who would give themselves fully to giving the gospel everywhere they go and be soldiers of the cross, telling others of their need of salvation and reaching the lost for Christ. Father, I pray you'd bless the remainder of this service. Bless Brother and Mrs. Minnick and their family. And we ask your hand to be on every moment of the remainder of this time together in Jesus' name. Amen.
We are so thrilled to have Brother and Mrs. Minnick with us. And I think Mrs. Minnick is already ready to go over there to piano. So what we're going to do, she is going to play and sing. And then after that, I'm going to introduce Brother Minnick and the family. So Mrs. Minnick, when you're ready, you go right ahead. Mrs. Minnick, I'm going to make your journey easy, and if you would just come this way. Brother Minnick, and I'm trying to remember your daughter's name, but if Ashlyn, would you come on up? And uh, we want to welcome them while they're coming. Thank Mrs. Minnick for this good song, and welcome the Minnicks to Bible Baptist Church tonight. They have other children that have already gone out to the kids' club. Uh, but the first thing I want to do, and this is heavy, you'll need two hands with this, Mrs. Minnick, but this is from our ladies' ministry, just as a thank you for your service to the Lord. And... Uh, it takes, it's not just the man, it takes the family. And uh, to have his wife walking side by side, you are a blessing to our church. And it is an honor for us to serve you this evening. And thank you for serving us. Beautiful song. Beautiful song, ma'am, on that. And uh, I've invited Brother Minnick tonight as part to help us to remember that we're not alone in California. Uh, you look around the country and you will hear uh, all kinds of things about California. There's a lot of good things happening out here as well. Some of the best churches in all of America are right here in this state. And uh, we're right on the firing line, but there needs to be more. There are 19 cities that I know of and I've heard of in the state of California with a population greater than 100,000 people that have no independent Baptist church witness whatsoever. 
in California. That is a need. Uh, I have become part of a fellowship of like-minded pastors in California to help make a difference in that, and I want our church involved in it. It's called California for Christ. Their website will be rolling out very soon, and I'm glad to be a part of that because the mission field has come to us, Uh, whether it is in 29 Palms or whether it's in Victorville or I used to call it the Tri-City, now it's really the Quad City area here. But the mission field is here in California, and there are many, many, many people in need of the gospel witness. We've had the privilege of supporting the Minnicks now for several years. Brother Minnick is the pastor of Freedom Baptist Church in 29 Palms, and I want you to listen well as he comes and preaches God's word tonight. Thanks, Brother Joel. Appreciate you. Well, thank the Lord for the wonderful privilege of being able to open the word of God and share with you our burden and even maybe rekindle a little bit of a a fire for what God is doing and how he's working in 29 Palms. Um, So God allowed us to go out there seven years ago in the middle of the Mojave Desert and in the middle of nothing. And I know uh, the gunny in the back uh, knows uh, the stumps well, and, uh, but there is a great need, and, and Pastor said it well, the mission field has come to us, and my wife and I were even, even this Sunday, um, we were, I was just kind of revisiting the, the Lord's Day and just thanking Him for what He did, and if I remember correctly, and we didn't have a great, quote-unquote, numerical numbers this Sunday, I think we were in uh, the mid-high 30s or so, and I'll tell you why that is in just a second, and we had five different countries represented, um, as well as, I think, 15 different states. And then we've counted over the last seven years that God has allowed us. We've had over 400 be part of our church, not just like come and visited. Like visitors are a blessing, but I'm talking about coming in, getting plugged in, growing, getting discipled, getting baptized, maybe getting saved. Over 400 um, have been able to be part of our church, and that's because of your faithful support. And God uses that so that we can give ourselves to the ministry and be spent for the ministry. And so we've had over 40 different nations represented, 40 different nations. You think about that. We've had young Marines from uh, the UAE. We've had them from uh, South Korea. We've had them from China. We've had them from the Philippines, Mexico, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, and all over um, from Guam. Um, Oh, good night. I can't even think of all the different countries that the Lord has allowed us to have from one of our young Marines, the funny thing, the, 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 uh, the kangaroo who came in, one of our young Marines, Matthew, his wife, uh, Sherry Lynn, uh, they're from Australia, and she sent us a video of her talking to a koala bear. She said, oh, look at the little koala bear. You're going to eat your little well, koala leaf. I don't even know. Uh, what do koala, leaf, koala bears eat? I don't even know. But um, what is it? Thank you so much for National Geographic. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, so they, but they, it was just, it was super awesome. But uh, she's from Australia, and so they're part of our church and such as that. But then we've had, um, I don't know how many different states, well over forty different states represented um, in our church. And so uh, the Lord allows us to focus on scattering, not gathering, because um, in by the beginning of June, we were averaging uh, close to, we were, if we, everyone was there, and I know that's the story, but our church guys have field ops and things like that. So it's not like a bunch of, um, we come once a Sunday. Well, like even this Sunday, some of our most faithful young men that are really growing and they're getting it, they have a field op this week. They have a range this week. And so we'll probably have, I don't know, of the probably seven young Marines that won't be in church um, because they have to prepare to keep us safe and such as that. And so we have, uh, we'd probably have 70 people if everyone was there, but we will lose half our church by the end of this month. This Sunday, we have another see you later service to uh, three families um, and families that we've led to the Lord and we've baptized and we've discipled and We've given our best to, and we've watched him grow. I mean, get it? One of the young men, the last thing that he's going to get to do is go to church camp at at Camp Ironwood um, next week with Ashlyn. And um, so we're praying and asking the Lord to bless that family, but we've saw them get into church and watched them grow. And then she got her sister to come and that family, 
and her son and um, so and their little daughter and such as that. And really, you know what's neat? The reason why the Maureen teaches piano, and so that's how it got them into church. But then they started coming faithfully because of Vacation Bible School. And we have we have that family, and then another family that their whole fa- all but their little baby boy. Um, Mason, all of them are saved. He's a rich, he's a staff sergeant in the Marine Corps. He's a salty, salty staff sergeant. And the Marines understand he's been a he's been an infantry Marine for 17 years. So the man um, stacks body bodies. So brother Tom, if you're watching, um, I love you and I'm thankful for you. So the Lord allows you because of your faithfulness to give and your faithfulness to support our ministry for us to be spent, like I was saying. So like, for instance, even one of our, we have a lot of SRT Marines, like, like PMO, like that's the military police. We have a bunch of PMO officers and SRT officers, which is super awesome, actually. And so one of them, uh, he's a sniper, Jesse. He was the first one to get saved. Um, they might, they were supposed to try to come, but their command won't let them go further than, I think it's 50 miles because they're part of the Marine Corps SWAT team. Um, the uh, and so they, they weren't allowed to come. And a bunch of our young guys and young families were like, oh, pastor, we want to come and uh, be able to there in force and support you and such as that. But even Jesse, uh, I think it was like two weeks ago, one of, uh, one of his Marines broke his arm, arm wrestling like dumb junior Marines do. And it was kind of funny. And so you just make fun of him. Oh, I'm sorry you broke your arm, big guy, you know. And, but the kid wasn't saved. His name is Peyton. So pray for Peyton. He's been to church uh, once, and we're trying to lead him to Christ and such as that. But Jesse was up all day long from 06 until who knows until forever, until after Bible study. And I was like, well, I can't. He had to take this kid down to Balboa. And I was like, well, I don't want you to go to Balboa at two o'clock in the morning after being up all day. I'll go with you. And the reason why I wanted to go with him was not because I wanted to do, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, an overnighter in Jesse's car, I wanted to witness to this young Marine and talk to him about his soul. Well, I was able to spend all day witnessing to this kid as he prepared to have surgery and such as that. And then even afterwards, because of your faithful support. And so I want to say thank you because of that. And there's been times where we've got to teach young Marines how to drive. Uh, We teach them how to balance their budget and things like that. It's, It's a super neat ministry and we love that. God allows us to be able to invest in these uh, young ladies and these young men's life and such as that. So if you have your Bible, so turn to Matthew chapter number 8. Matthew chapter number 8. When you stand it, go ahead and stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Thankful for everyone being here tonight and a good turnout, huh? Is this your normal turnout, preacher? No, it's praise the Lord for that. Man, that's a tremendous and, and so many wonderful generations and cultures represented. That's such a wonderful blessing. I thank the Lord for Brother Joel being a good friend uh, for many years and such as that. Um, this is neat. So my father-in-law went to Bible college at Pacific Coast Baptist Bible College, which is now Heartland Baptist Bible College. And when they moved out here for uh, several months, my in-laws um, li- lived up here in Victorville until they found a house down in Ontario, but they came to church out here at Bible Baptist Church. But then also, and I know you guys know the Dodds, Brother and Mrs. Dodd were my adopted parents when I was in Bible college, and so I love and love the Dodds. I'm so thankful for their encouragement and such as that. And so Matthew chapter number eight, it says this, and when he was come down from the mountain, a great multitude followed him, and behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, See thou, tell no man, but go by way and show thyself to the priest and the, offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having a soldier under me, and I say unto this man, Go, and he goeth, and to another, Come, and he cometh, and to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled 
and, to, uh, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down at Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and else thou hast believed, so it be done unto thee. And the servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Let's pray. Father, bless your word and speak to us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Have you ever marveled at something? No, really, take a step back and maybe you start wondering about, have I really marveled at something? Today, in the high desert where all of us live, it rained. That's the first time it's rained since the days of Noah. <laughs> no, really, I, I really think I'm not even exaggerating, and preachers often do that, but it rained today. My kids came running outside with great excitement. Build the ark, Dad, it's raining. <laughs> like, oh my goodness, it, it's raining, and there's nothing like that beautiful smell that the rain brings. Good night. I, I love it. And my wife said, good night. Maybe we could just, maybe it'll rain tomorrow. I said, no, it's probably going to be 110, maybe 120. We'll be a human rotisserie chicken tomorrow. So enjoy the rain while you have it. Man, that was amazing. I marveled, marveled at that rain. Maybe you could think, and you saw my beautiful wife, and you wonder, how in the world did she get him? Really, you're thinking, how in the world did he get her? Good night. That man must have begged, pleaded, and prayed. He prayed. Man, thank the Lord for that. Man, I, I marvel that God blessed me with my beautiful wife. Maybe you, maybe you think as a parent, you, you celebrated Father's Day this last weekend, and all the dads in here that have a daughter. Do you have a daughter, Brother Joel? Oh, man. Boys are great, but daughters are the best. No, I'm, I'm not trying to say they're my favorite. But I, and I love my sons, they're cool, and, they're, and they like to fight and wrestle. I love to wrestle my, my boys, but my daughters, good night. They are just, you're like, well, but they got you wrapped around your finger, and you don't. Can we lying, dads? When I remember when my little daughter was born, and she had a, a mane of hair, I mean, all this crazy blonde hair going everywhere, and these beautiful blue eyes, and then she looked like a short, chubby version of my father-in-law, and I'm like, oh, Lord... Please show mercy. And thank the Lord she's grown up into a beautiful, beautiful young lady. And I marvel at that. I marvel at what it is to be a daddy. And you think of new life, and there's nothing like it when God blesses you with a little one. And you, you, you know what it is, daddies in here. You count their little toes. Come on, you know you do. You, you know they're like, one, two, three, four, 11, 12, 14, yikes. <laughs> They're cute, but man, you marvel at those things, and then you, you start to hear them coo and laugh and crawl, and you marvel at those things. Maybe you think about when you got married, and you marvel at your new bride or your new husband. Maybe you think of something like the natural world. You think of the Grand Canyon that all of us have probably visited, and you look at it in, in great admiration and great wonder, and you marvel at that. Maybe you think of the Great Barrier Reef with all the beautiful array of colors. Or maybe even you could think of Mount Everest, 32,000 feet up into the air. That's absolutely incredible. It's amazing. Actually, two of our young Marines climbed Mount Everest a few years ago, Howie, and Just, Howie Chung and Justin Lee. Great young Marines, great guys. But they, they took a picture when they were right at, at base camp. They're all, we're going to do this for Jesus and you, Pastor. And I'm like, sweet. And so I live vicariously through those young Marines that climbed Mount Everest. I was super proud of them. And I, I marvel at Mount Everest. Maybe you're like, well, I, you know, Pastor, those are great and those are wonderful, but what about the Aurora Borealis? Well, isn't that amazing, the, 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 the beautiful colors that God shows forth His handiwork with? Maybe you think of the intricacies of the mind and how God has given finite humans the, the ability to erect some of the most amazing things. And maybe you think of the Panama Canal or even the Hoover Dam. Yeah, I, we live pretty close to the Hoover Dam, and isn't that an architectural feat? Well, isn't it a spectacular sight? I always wanted to go to the Hoover Dam. Have you guys ever been to the Hoover Dam? So one time, my wife and I had the privilege 
we were traveling, we were moving from ministry positions and such as that. We were actually moving from here in Southern California. Uh, maybe, we, and um, I don't know, we, there was a, a sign that says you can't bring a travel trailer across the Hoover Dam, and we were towing our car. Well, that's not a travel trailer, <laughs> right? And Proverbs 32, 1 taught me this, that it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Um, and so I thought, I'm just going to play stupid. That's not a travel trailer. And so I just kept going. And I'm like amazed at the Hoover Dam. Like, this is, inc- this is better than every documentary I've ever seen. This is it. Wow, this is incredible. And then all of a sudden, I come up to a park ranger and they, stop! I'm like, whoa, calm down, Yogi, settle down. And then they do this. Do you know what this means? Who knows what this means? What does it mean? Stop. This means stop? Good night. Don't ever get pulled over, please. For your safety as well as that officer. This means keep going, doesn't it? No, it doesn't, liars. No, it means roll down your window. And the lady said, how come you didn't roll down your window? I said, well, the window was rolled up. I couldn't hear you. And so she said, well, you can't bring a travel trailer. I said, well, I'm towing a car. And then she asked, well, who loaded this U-Haul? Not to brag, but my wife did. <laughs> she did an excellent job, just organized. No, of course I did. And so they went and they looked through the great intricacies of Tetris and such as that. But I still, it was amazing. And she's so like just kind of giving me an earful. But I was still like, oh, I get a good view of the Hoover Dam. And I marveled at it. And I, was, I thought it was absolutely amazing. Maybe you think of the Great Wall of China or the Taj Mahal. Maybe the Great Pyramids. But all of those are spectacular. All of those are wonderful. But in our passage of Scripture, we're not just talking about me that has the attention span of a kindergartner with crayons. We're not talking about a, a, a Marine that just got a new box of Crayolas that's about to get his favorite color and have a snack. We're talking, we're talking about the Master. No, we're talking about the Creator. We're talking about the one that sustains this earth. The one that gives us existence. The one that allows us to breathe his air. The Bible says this in the the Psalms. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. We're talking about the God that allows us to live on his earth. The creator. The one that put everything into existence. In six literal 24 hour days. We're talking about that God that spoke everything into existence. That God marvels. That's absolutely astonishing. That's absolutely amazing. Today we're talking about the master that marvels. Well, what is it to marvel? It it means to cause wonder. It means to cause admiration and astonishment. It means it's something phenomenal. It's something awesome. It's something spectacular. The interesting thing, though, is about this word marvel, it's an absolute in the Greek. That means this that it arrests his attention, and you completely stop. The one that is allowing us to live on his earth, his attention has completely stopped. His attention has been arrested at this man's great faith. So we know, though, Jesus in this passage of Scripture has just concluded the Sermon on the Mount, this grand message, the greatest message ever preached by anyone And he focuses on being. That's why he introduces this great message about the Beatitudes. And not just blind activity, but blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are they that are poor. Blessed are they that are mourn, for they shall be comforted. He wants us to focus on being, not just doing, not just activity. But it comes from our very heart and our very being. Well, in verse number 29 of chapter number 7, the the writer here, Matthew, describes how Jesus gives this great message, and he is one that preaches with great authority. Well, in this culture, though, it's a culture that's full of diseases and sicknesses. They run everywhere. Polio is everywhere. Blindness is everywhere. Leprosy and deafness and dropsy and dumbness and all sorts of sickness are everywhere. It's common in this great culture. But the amazing thing about Jesus, though, is this, that he will always heal with word and touch and no show. 
Listen, Jesus does not need the spectacular to do the spiritual. Listen, Jesus, though, in this passage of Scripture, Matthew's goal and desire for those that would be the audience then, that would be us at this case, would that we would sit at his feet, and Matthew always presents Jesus as the king. So if Matthew is presenting Jesus as the king, that makes us, those that are listening, those that are sitting at his feet, then his subjects. So he is the sovereign Lord, the king of everything, therefore we are his subjects, so therefore we ought to listen intentionally and listen on purpose and be ready to respond with what the king has to say to us. But this king, though, marvels. Well, in the passage of Scripture, though, we're introduced, though, to a wretched man, this leprous man. This leprous man is a social outcast. And everything, everywhere this social outcast went, the Pharisees had to cry, the, the, or not the Pharisees, but this man would have to cry out that he was unclean. He had to get everyone's attention to let him know that he was unclean. Unclean. Also, though, if he was to walk into a building, they would consider it ceremoniously unclean. So if a, a, a leprous man came in here, the religious elite would have condemned this building, and therefore it would not be able to be occupied for religious services, and it would be closed down faster than you can say, wham, bam, thank you, man. It would be done, son, done. And you had to do what the religious elite said because they were the ones that set the standard and the cadence of that day. Historians tell us, though, that the abuse was so relentless that when they would come in, a leprous man would come in, that they wouldn't even buy something from the same street that a leprous man would walk down. And that they would uh, treat them like they were a walking example of insidious and wicked and indulgent sin. And that they would throw rocks at these men as they would walk through the city. Dwight Pentecost, the great scholar, said this, the leprous man didn't touch Jesus. Jesus touched the leprous man. Jesus was not polluted. The leprous man was cleansed. See, the great thing about this leprous man was this. He did not just know that God can because all of us know that God can. It's one thing to know God can. All of us in here know God, God blesses a cheerful giver. We all know that God blesses faithfulness. We all know that God answers our prayer. It's one thing to know that God can. It's another thing to move past that to a place that you understand that God will. And that's what happened in the heart and in the life of this leprous man. He knew that Jesus can heal him. He knew he could heal him, but he went away knowing that Jesus will heal him. It's an amazing different sense of confidence. Well, in our passage, though, we're talking, though, not just about this wretched man. We're talking about also a resented man. But the am amazing thing is they called this book of the Bible the ecclesiastical gospel because here we have the local church being introduced. We have the Lord's Supper. We also have, uh, we have baptism. We also have church discipline and we have all manner of dealings and we have the great commission for the local church. You can go back and you can study that and you can see how the Lord wants to and desires to reach the nations, to reach California, to reach the Inland Empire is through the local church. It, listen, God's not, intention is not some pragmatic circus to reach this world. God's intention and God's desire for the Great Commission to advance and to go into all the world is us within the local churches spread throughout this community and that community and that community to reach the world. God's desire is to always use his local churches to reach the world for the cause of Christ. Well, here, though, we can see that empowerment taking place by this resented man, this centurion. Well, what's a centurion? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Well, most likely, the centurion is a Samaritan. Well, the Jews had great disdain and disgust towards Samaritans. Maybe if you live in Victorville, you think of someone in the low desert and you think, oh, that's terrible. Maybe you think of someone in Apple Valley. Oh, Apple Valley. Or Hesperia. Any of you guys live in Hesperia? Thank you. I see that hand. I'll pray for you. Thank you. I see that hand. All right. <laughs> Like, so you, you, maybe you had that type of, maybe there's a lot of rivalry. But it's not just rivalry, it's, it is blatant prejudice. It's disdain and disgust that they have towards 
not only a Samaritan, but also a centurion. Because a centurion to them represented the occupied Roman Empire. Because remember, they were under the tyrannical reign of the Roman Empire. And if a Roman soldier wanted a Jewish person to do something, it wasn't like they were going to complain about it. They were going to do what was expected of them right away with a good attitude because it could be their life. But the interesting thing is, every time, because remember, the Jews hated Samaritans, but also they hate centurions. The powerful truth here, though, is every time a centurion is mentioned in the Bible, though there's great prejudice and hate towards the centurions, the amazing thing is God always shows them in a good light. You think about when Jesus died on the cross. Remember the centurion? He said, surely this was a righteous man. Remember when the Lord opened up Peter's heart and he went over to Cornelius and he said, hey, listen, he received that vision and he said, neither call that uncommon. And the Macedonian called to go into all the world so that the Gentile, the, to let them know the Gentiles could receive the gospel. Remember that in Acts chapter 10? Remember that? Yep, you know what I'm talking about. I know pastor's been preaching through Acts. Actually, I went and was looking through your website because um, I was like, I don't want to preach through Acts now. Um, so thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> So you, you, think about, you think about what happens in Acts, right? So the gospel, the doors are swung right open. Well, what was Cornelius? Well, he was a centurion. He was a centurion. So it's pretty amazing, though. But he's always a good guy. But understand something. This man, who was looked at with great hate, with disdain and disgust, makes the master marvel. So what is it to make the master marvel? Well, let me ask you this. How can you make the master marvel? Let me give some qualities of someone that makes the master marvel, and then we'll find out how we can make the master marvel. First of all, remember others rather than yourself, verse number five and six. Remember, he's a Gentile. You remember that? He's a Gentile, and he's approaching the rabbi. And then the Bible tells us this about his servant, that he felt that he was grievously tormented. Um, you only know if someone is grievously tormented if you're around that person. So for instance, one time I had the great privilege, it was one of the greatest honors of my life, to have a kidney stone. <laughs> it, was, it was such a blessing. If, you ever, if you've never had one, you should get one sometime, right? Hey, just letting you know how much it encourages. Some pa pastor, count, uh, pastor counts like, Brother Manic, you're out of your ever-loving gourd. How many have ever had a kidney stone? Aren't they a blessing? Man, no, they're not. No, I had, so I had a kidney stone and I was in terrible, awful, awful pain. I was grievously tormented. I remember it was, I was a youth pastor, and I was supposed to preach that night. You remember being a youth pastor, and it's finally your turn to preach. Yeah, and you, the, not all the pastors are as friendly in the pulpit to the youth pastors as pastor counts. And maybe you know why now after you've gotten halfway through this message. Um, but I was like, it was finally my turn. Woohoo! I thought, man, I'm going to preach it up. And, but I'm... I'm sick. I'm throwing up sick. I mean, I'm sweating. I'm in the bathroom crying. And one of the men in the church is all, brother, brother Clint, you're going to the hospital, son. And I'm like, no, I'm okay. And he's like, no, you're not okay, brother. You're going to the hospital. So I went to the hospital. He knew, and my wife knew, I was grievously tormented. This Gentile man knows his servant is grievously tormented. Did you know, though, in that economy, a servant, you could buy an animal for more money than a servant. It was cheaper, listen, it was cheaper to buy a cow, it was cheaper to buy a sheep, it was cheaper to buy a lamb than it was to buy a servant. But this man sees how desperately sick he is. Then let me ask you, though, Where's your focus? Do you know there are people all around, all around the high desert, whether it's Victorville, whether it's Apple Valley, whether it's Atalanto, whether it's Hesperia, whether it's even into Big Bear, whether it's even into uh, Landers or the Lucerne Valley, all around us, all the way if you keep going down to 247, you go into Joshua Tree, you get into 29 Palms, and you even go all the way over to Wander Valley. All around us, there are people that are grievously tormented, grievously tormented, sin sick, devastated by the tragedy of sin. What we need to do is come to a place where we remember others rather than ourselves. So what do you do then? Well, you respond in unworthiness. You can look at verse number seven and eight with that. 
respond with your unworthiness. But understand something. Thank the Lord today that he still says this to those that are sick, those are desperately that need help. I will come and I'm going to help them. But the custom of the day, though, Jesus would have been considered unclean. And so this man realizes how unworthy he was to have the Lord Jesus Christ to go help him. But understand something, Jesus always gives help and he always gives ear to those that understand how unworthy they truly are. See, you may start thinking about within this uh, quad city area, is there 400,000 people up here, Brother Joel? 500,000 people. I know of three, four independent Baptist churches up here. I know Brother Strasbaugh. I know that um, the other brother, I can't think of his name, and I think Brother Brock was up here before. Um, but for 500,000 people, and maybe we think, oh, well, there's no way we can, but there's a God in heaven that can, and that can touch lives, and that can transform lives, and that can work wonders, and that can do something Amazing. See, it's not about our ability, but it's all about the Almighty and His ability. We just have to realize, you know that the only thing that you really offer the Lord Jesus Christ is your sinfulness and your availability. And so you need to just be willing to come undone and come unworthy before Him. And so what you need to do is come to a place where you are willing to just say this, I'll relinquish my authority. Look down to verse number nine. For I am a man under authority. Having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. He's a man of authority, so he's a centurion. So scholars tell us a centurion, either, either he was, had a hundred uh, troops under him, or even up to a thousand troops under him. That's a man given under authority. I forgot your name, brother, but I know you're a devil dog. What's your name, though? Sorry. Edward. So, brother Edward, what rank were you? Gunneries, okay, so I know the gunny in the back and the gunny in the front. Are there any other young Marines in here? So guess what? Anyone else? This guy? Okay, there we go. Well, why are you? Come on, man up, boo. Come on, you're better than that. So right, so what rank are you guys? So okay, so there we are. All right, cool. so the Lance Corporals, guess what? The gunny in the back is still gunny, isn't he? Yeah, because he's a man under authority. Right here, this is still the gunny. You're retired though, correct, right, gunny? No, okay, so there we go. But guess what, he's still the gunny though. Even the gunny in the back, to him, because he's the senior gunny, he's still gunny, correct? Yeah, he's a man, why? Because he's a centurion. Listen, you know what we have to do is come to a place where we realize, hey, you know what, I relinquish my authority. At our church, listen, I, we have had, we have, we have right now, we have a, a lieutenant colonel, but guess what? It don't matter what rank you are, son. It don't matter. Right? When the Lance Corporals walk in, that's just Russ. We had uh, the battalion sergeant major. We led him to Lord and his family. Uh, Michael Sedano. Do you know Michael? Um, so Michael Sedano and his family, we led them to the Lord. Man, they started growing. He's, uh, he, he was 1-7 sergeant major. Now he's uh, the sergeant major of Miramar, the, the, bay, uh, the air base there. Man, he was a man given under authority. Another man in our church, his name was Zach Lucas. So brother Zach, um, man, he grew like crazy. So when I got ordained, now I'm going to ask Brother Joel this. My wife may not have a ride home after this, so, so Gunny, you and your wife might need to give her a ride home. So my, well, I might ask your dad and your mom. When I got ordained, and now I'm going to ask Pastor Counts, Pastor Pastor Counts. When I order, got ordained, we fed all the pastors and everyone at the church there. Did you feed everyone? There was food. Okay, this is the first. This is the first time that's ever pastor. Pastor counts, senior counts. Did you feed everyone? No. See, we fed everyone a bunch of tacos. It was a blessing. Praise the Lord. Like pastor, man, I quit acting like you didn't want your tacos. Okay, I just didn't want. Uh, listen, you're about to get ordained, and you have. They call it the interrogation council. No, and the, my father-in-law's on the interrogation council and others, and they're just going to task on me. What do you believe about baptism? What do you about? Uh, I mean, just bombarding me. And I'm getting kind of overwhelmed, and I'm like, oh, man, this is rough. Oh, ah. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, we have to feed everyone. And at that time, at that time, we had our just a little storefront, 1,200 square feet. 
well, you can't just feed people in the auditorium. You have to tear it down with <laughs> hashtag church planner problems. So you have to tear it down and then set it up to make the fellowship hall. It's so exciting. But then you're waiting for the interrogation council. Woohoo! But Brother Zach, who's a major, says, Pastor, don't worry, I got this. And him and his wife set up and had all the young Marines popping and locking, setting up the, the auditorium into a fellowship hall. But him and his wife went and served everyone. This is a man, he's a Mustang. Listen, if there's anyone that really could have just been like, hey guys, go ahead and try to do that. He's leading the way. One time, my favorite service we ever had, it was on our first Mother's Day. Um, we lost power in the storefront. It was super cool, actually. Yeah. And we, but we had this cool idea. This is, let's serve all the moms Mother's Day breakfast. <laughs> okay. And so Brother Zach's all, Pastor, we got this. We'll, serve, we'll make the breakfast. We got this. And I'm like, sweet. And then another man, Brother, 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 Brother Rick, and he's a retired staff sergeant, but he's a really salt, well, he's a, he is a salt lord staff sergeant. I mean, crusty, crusty salt lord staff sergeant. Like, but I love him. Um, and uh, so Brother Rick, and they're all just serving everyone, and I'm trying to figure out what to do. And they're don't worry, we got this, Pastor. And then the power goes out, and we had one plug that was working. Everything was all cooked. Uh, we had little griddle pans. We didn't have a cool uh, industrial kitchen like you guys. Lucky. Uh, so, like, we had the griddle pans all hooked up, and we're cooking, and then the power goes out, and one plug is working. One plug. The lights aren't coming on, and Brother Zach's like, Pastor, this is nothing. I made breakfast for my Marines in Afghanistan. This is, we got this. You know what he did? He just relinquished his authority. You know what it was? I surrender. There are is, listen, there is no one in here that is too good to do anything in the church. You, all we are, listen, all we are is servants. Well, that means this, all we are is slaves for the Lord Jesus Christ. So many times what happens in our life is this, we'll come up to Pastor Joel, we'll come up to Pastor Pastor Counts back in the day and say, I want to be used but you know what the great thing about being used is? You're used. No, that means this. You're cleaning the church bathrooms. That means this. You're straightening up chairs or hymn books. That means this. You're mopping the fellowship hall after kids had a bunch of tacos and Brother Ted's just busy throwing dodgeballs at kids. And you don't want to talk back to Brother Ted because he will chin check you like nobody's business. You know that video he shares on Facebook every other week? He's like, Come on, you guys know, and then the fear of God falls upon every person in here. And that's why, listen, Brother Joel gets a little bold when he's like, God bless is a cheerful giver. Our brother Ted will come find you. <laughs> Ain't that right, Brother Ted? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You know what you do, though? Listen, MMA fighter Brother Ted, though, you know what he does? He just relinquishes authority. Amen. Pastor Counts, guess what? He doesn't care about cleaning the church. He'll gladly do it. Same with pastor, pastor counts. He, you know why? He's just a servant. That's what we have to do is come to a place where we just relinquish our authority, where we just throw up the white flag and say, I surrender. So then how do we have great faith? Though? Because these are qualities of someone that has great faith. What is it to make the master marvel? Well, how can I have great faith though, pastor? What can I do to have great faith? It's this, when you refuse to be a spectator, and you come to a place where you are willing to be a participant. So many times there are people that are spectating the church moving forward, going forward and advancing with the Great Commission. Oh, it's great that you have outreach two times a week, but me pass out an invitation? No way, I can't do that. They're spectators. The offering plate passes by. Oh, someone else will put money in the offering plate. This is a big church. Oh, no, no, no. But understand something. When you give to missions, let me say it very bluntly. When you give to missions, you come to a place where you're now a participant and you feed the Minnick family. And you feed the Flores family. And you feed all the other families that God allows you to, to support that are filled on, this, on the back wall. What an incredible display of God's blessing and God's goodness. That's because God's people mar let the master marvel because they say, you know what? I don't want it to pass me by. I want to be a participant. That's why many of you have volunteered to work long, tireless, rigorous hours at VBS. And there is nothing as exhausting 
as VBS. We have VBS the week after that. Oh, good night. And you know, after you go to like Six Flags and you feel just so exhausted and you feel like you're on a roller coaster afterwards, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you do. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. You're just like, oh, that's how you feel every day after vacation Bible school. But you're going to come back and you're going to keep coming back and you're going to keep coming back. You know why? Because you realize I'm not going to be a spectator. I'm going to be a participant. Listen, that's what God wants you to do today is be willing to be a participant. And then when God looks at you, God marvels. And then that's why the Bible says that many shall come from the east and the west and the north and the south. Listen, oh, I can think about what God has done and how he's worked over 400 people. I think of this young Marine that I just, uh, man, God has been doing some great things, Brother Joel, in the last several, last several months, even the last year, it's been incredible. I got to baptize this, um, I baptized this kid, Trey. He's a, a corporal about to pick up sergeant, super sweet kid. He's six foot five, All right? Who's six foot five in here? Anyone? Anyone six foot five? He no Nephilims in here, okay? So, so this big old Nephilim comes in, he's, he's growing in the Lord, him and his wife, Tori, super, super sweet, and he's all, well, I reckon, he's from North Carolina, he's all, I reckon I gotta get baptized, preacher, and I'm like, yep, I reckon you're right, and so he goes, and he wants to get baptized, but he's so tall, we have one of those portable bapt baptistries, hashtag church planner problems, but he's so tall that his head's just like hitting the top of it, so I had to waterboard him, like hold him down, and push him under, and I'm like, oh, there we go, we believe in baptism by immersion, son, like it was, man, that was so cool, but guess what? Some of you gave to missions, so you got to see Trey get baptized. You think of Bree, she's a dog handler, and she's growing. All these young Marines, good, they, I'm telling you, they're like, Pastor, when do you get home tomorrow so we can come over? Like, they're like, well, I'm not sure. They're like, well, we'll, we'll just, we'll, yeah, and some of them even know the code to get into our house. No, I'm not even kidding. Trevor and Janelle, they know the code. They do, I don't care. I think even the Horrocks know the code to get into the house, just so you know, probably. I, I don't feel safe with Brother Tom knowing it because he might eat all my food, but man, <laughs> praise the Lord. Like, because it's their home. You know why it's their home? Because you give to missions. No, 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 really. You, I, think about, I think about this young Marine, Jesse. So Jesse, he's a sniper, and um, Jesse got saved last year, and then we were about to do the Lord's Supper right before Easter, and he's a pastor. I know I've never been scripturally baptized, and I know I cannot take the Lord's Supper. Um, will you baptize me? So I got to, this is the coolest thing ever. I got to baptize him the day of the Lord's Supper. That Sunday, that, that not Sunday, that Tuesday night of the Lord's Supper, I got to baptize him. That was, that was so cool. You know why? We had money to pay the water bill. You know why we had money to pay the water bill? Because Bible Baptist Church supported our family. So that we could be there. You know what? Listen, you know why we were able to give ourselves to, so we could reach a bunch of little devil pups like these guys? No, no, no disrespect. They know they're devil pups. They know it. They own it. They get it. You know why we get to reach the gunnies like that? Even salty. We have salty old retired gunnies, like the gunny in the back. Oh, yeah. We do. We have a retired a lady drill instructor. She was in the Marine Corps for 22 years. Our kids call her Nana Devil Dog. Oh, yeah, you know why we got to go to the hospital on Christmas Day and spend all day with her and just because she was sick? You know why? Because you participate. Listen, some of you, listen, some of you are just spectators. But God wants to and desires to have, see your faith expand and see you be used of him in such a way that it's great faith. So let me ask you, as God takes inventory of your heart, and God looks at your life, do you have great faith? Let me tell you another cool thing. It was about two years, was it two years ago? Three years ago. Two years ago. Three years ago. Three, so we were, we were out canvassing and doing outreach, and um, we came to the Seventh-day Adventist building, right? And it was on Saturday, and they were having, they were having their meeting. I don't want to say they are in church, because just saying, come on, you know, don't, some of you are like, oh, no, you know, come on. So anyway, so they were having their meeting, and we went in there. It was, I had more young Marines with me than they had in church, and so I was like, maybe it didn't start. And so I asked them, I said, hey, listen, do you think uh, we could rent your building on the Lord's Day? And they got mad at me because they didn't want me to rent their building on the Lord's Day, and they ran us off. I'm like, okay, that was nice of you. Praise the Lord. Godspeed, you know? And so 
I, I just took inventory, okay? There was two of them, and there was six or seven of us, so we'll just pray. And so sure enough, a year goes by, and Brother Bill, our song leader, Brother Bill comes, and he uh, tells me he's a pastor. Uh, he uh, runs the post office, and he's a retired first sergeant. He goes, Pastor, uh, he's from Alabama, so he calls me preacher. All the southern guys call me preacher. So he goes, Preacher, that Adventist building went out. They're, they went under. They're not in business anymore. And I'm like, okay, there we go. So then what we did is we began to pray. And then we went and did some recon and some Marsoc Marine stuff and went and looked, spied out the land like the, 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 uh, the, 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 the spies to spy out Canaan. And so then what we did is we went and um, we went like the children of Israel. We went and walked around the building seven times and then seven times. And then we shouted. I'm not even kidding. We actually really did that. Um, and then we acquired entry into the building. Okay, we broke into the building. Um, and, and then because that's a sin, that is a sin, breaking and entering. I didn't think, like my proverb, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Pastor Counts taught me that. Um, <laughs> You know it's true, brother. No, I'm just kidding. So I'm just, just being serious. No, I'm just kidding. So then what we did, we got right with God because we thought that was, we shouldn't have broken. Now, the gunny would have been, actually, I know you would have been right there. So me and, me and, uh, me and a gunny, Brother Jason, um, and some of our young Marines, some of the other Lance Corporals and Corporals and, uh, and a warrant officer, uh, we went and got forgiveness. We asked the Lord to forgive us. And then we said, Lord, we want this building. Would you please give it to us? And so then we went through the series of process of trying to figure out who owns this building. Did you know that there's a Southeastern Conference of the Seventh-day Adventists of Southern California? Cool, huh? It's in Loma Linda, just so you know. I bet you some of you probably, probably fit, connected those dots, but that's the real name. That's the entity name if you ever look it up. So then we have to, but they're under another denomination of like the Western states of the Adventists, like they're like a weird denominational spider web. So then they're meeting together, but I meet this man, Mr. McKinstry, and I'm talking to him. I'm like, well, we want to buy your building, Mr. McKinstry. And he, he was like, okay. And I'm wondering, I wonder how much he's going to sell me this building for. And uh, he says, well, just put in an offer. And so I'm praying and I have this idea in my head. This is crazy. I know you're like, that's not a shock, Brother Manick. Um, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to give an offer. And most people mocked me for my offer. I offered him, the building is 7,000 square feet on five acres of land. I offered him $150,000 for the building. And sure enough, three days later, three, one day later, they called me back and they said, um, Pastor Minnick, we accept your offer. And in three years, the Lord has blessed our church and we paid that building off. No, but listen, that's because of churches like yours have participated. Because we could have never done that on our own. We're the church of the revolving door. We're the church of the perpetual church plant. Good night. We're always replanting and replanting and replanting and replanting. But churches that are established like yours, like say, hey, we want them to be able to, we want them to reach those young Marines. We want them to be able to give themselves to those young Marines. You know, another cool story, and I'm done. No, I'm telling you, God does some great things when you get to be a participant. Last year, the men that owned our house, um, 29 Palms has become a destination city because of the Joshua Tree National Forest. Like, everyone wants to go there. I don't know why you would want to go there. Like, I'm not even, you guys live, you're close enough to realize, we're, have you guys been to 29 yet? Ha, 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 you haven't lived, fellas. Um, when you do, call me up, okay? Well, we'll I'll go buy you lunch and all that. Or you can get in air conditioning at my house. Oh, so I don't know why you, like Joshua trees are ugly. Anyone think, oh, they're beautiful. No, they're not. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Okay, they're weird looking. Um, Gunny, you've been to 29. You have to. You do like a Cax or a Steel Knight or something. Yeah. So anyhow, our, the housing market has exploded, even probably up here, correct? Like houses are nuts. Before you could buy a house, a decent house, for $170,000, maybe a little bit more up here because it's, it's nicer. That's a hard thing to say of the high desert, any part of the high desert. <laughs> like, come on, compared to Rancho Cucamonga or something like that. But it's nicer, it's better. Like, you actually have a target, right? Um, and such as that. Like, 29 Palms, we got a Burger King. Woo-hoo-hoo. <laughs> yeah. 
and the, the health department always gives it a B for best, right? Um, <laughs> McDonald's is closed half the time, and Del Taco, where you can get, never mind, anyway. Um, <laughs> but for whatever reason, we have like four four-star restaurants, like all these hoity-toity ones. If you come visit, I'll take you to one of them. We're not getting food, but I'll take you to one of them. <laughs> We're just going to go to Bamboo Garden, okay, like where it's $5.99 for us to eat, and we'll share, okay? Um, so here's the thing, though. Like, so we have, and they're, they're building a resort in 29 Palms. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I thought, too. But they're building a resort. They've built all these weird, uh, what is it, like those stream, those, uh, you know those aluminum can RVs? I forgot what they're called. Airstreams. They have an Airstream resort, but they're all high-end and bougie in there. And they pay, like, for Airbnbs, they rent them out for, like, two or $300 a night. Okay, I don't know what... I went to that one of those bougie places. There was no marine in there, and there was no local in there. It was all tourists. So the price of houses, the guy's like, I'm going to sell it for $330,000. Listen, I'm the pastor of the perpetual church plant. There's no way that a bank is going to be like, yeah, go ahead. We're going to hook you up with a loan for $330,000. It's not happening. So we just began to pray. And so we're like, Lord, we need something. And so sure enough, a, a brother, a Christian brother, was PCSing, or he was EASing. Uh, he was a retired uh, master guns. And he said, you know what? I'd rather a pastor, a church have a pastor. And I'd rather be blessable than get rich. I'd rather get the equity in heaven. And so he sold us, he sold us his house for what he bought it for seven years ago. Right, I checked the Zillow amount. It was worth $371,500 today. He sold it to me for $240,000. Then he, then he said, oh yeah, Brother Minnick, I wanted to tell you, we own that plot of land next to you, right there next to, that, next to the house. You know, there's no sense for us keeping that. You can have it. That's a gift for, for you guys. You know why? That's because God decided, hey, you know what? You're a participant, not a spectator. Listen, God wants you to be a participant. And then when God looks down at your life, he has great faith. So I wonder, as God takes an inventory of each heart, does he see great faith? Because that's his desire. God looks for and wants to see participants, not spectators. Pastor Joel. I'm going to ask you to stand together, please. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. A participant, not a spectator. Living by great faith. Brother Josh is going to come. My wife is coming to the piano. We're going to play a verse of invitation. I ask if you'd come. The Lord has spoken to your heart tonight. A decision that you've made. Settle it here with the Lord tonight. If you need in, the, you need in your life, you know only God can meet that need. Come tonight. You're here tonight and you're not saved. Would you come? Allow someone to take God's word and show you how you can be saved tonight. Father, we bring you this invitation. Father, I ask that you would do with it what only you can. We need to hear from you, and we're glad that we did from your message tonight for us. And thank you for it. But now, Father, is a time of decision. And I pray that we would be open before you because you already know our heart. And be honest before you. And come as you have led us tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. As Brother Josh begins to sing, God spoke in your heart tonight. Would you come?
thank you for that message tonight. We needed to hear that this evening. Mrs. Minnick, thank you for that good song. And uh, it's so good to have them with us tonight. In a moment, I'm going to dismiss them out to the foyer so that you can greet them. Before they go, I want them to be able to hear this. Uh, if you have an extra dollar or five or ten or twenty, and the Lord would just lead you to give that to Him uh, and to the family, you have my permission to do so. Don't need to mention it to me, nor does He need to mention to me what is given to Him tonight. Just between you and Him, the Lord would lead you. You're welcome to do so on your way out tonight. Make sure that you grab some of these cards. Kookaburra Coast. And uh, VBS starts this coming Monday night. I know there's been a lot of effort, a lot of work. If you haven't yet, go look at the gym. Uh, go look down the hallways, upstairs, downstairs. They're doing a lot of work. It's going to be a great week. Again, I want to challenge it. If you have a vehicle and you have kids in the neighborhood, would you and your wife, you and your family, yourself, would you make a commitment to fill that vehicle up and bring kids in for Vacation Bible School starting this coming Monday night? The next big thing, we've got Church Sunday. Again, do you know at least one person or two people or five people that you could invite to be in church this Sunday? If you do, pick up that phone, go across the street, see them at work, and invite them to church this Sunday. Brother and Mrs. Minnick, and uh, Ashlyn, you can make your way out to the foyer and the folks can greet you. As we go tonight, remember, we're loving God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind. We're reaching out and reaching in, reaching others with the gospel and encouraging others in Christ. And we're growing in Christ day by day as we walk with Him. Father, I pray you'd bless your people tonight. I pray, Father, that you'd bless the minics and their work and their service, their ministry. And Father, I pray that this message would be more than something we just heard right now, but it would impact our lives as we endeavor to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. We'll see you real soon.